When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, aka Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. It's still Eclipse Week, so it's been my pleasure to put up more videos to add to the Eclipse discussion. Now, for a little fun, last week I put out a video mocking the fact that globe deniers don't have a model that can explain the appearances of solar and lunar eclipses. By the way, the story I presented, The Great Serpent's Biggest Trick, is available as a paperback book on Amazon. The link is in the description. But I received a comment on that video from someone named My Name, My Last Name, saying, this is how eclipses work on a flat earth, with a link to this video by Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. I think the guy who runs its name is Dave. This video, Why Don't We See the Moon During a Solar Eclipse, is about six years old, and normally I might say, hey, that was six years ago, leave it alone. He's probably updated his theory by now with new information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. No, within the last year, this dude publishes another video called The Missing Sun Solar Eclipse, reiterating the same claim. So this video by Dearth may be six years old, but it is fair game. Dearth has a large following, and according to my name, my last name, this video is the best eclipse evidence presented. The best. So let's look at it, shall we? It begins... What causes a solar eclipse? We are told that the moon is the cause of a solar eclipse. It sure makes sense because if you track the moon for its 27.3 day cycle, the 40 hours it is missing, it would be right where the eclipse is happening. You know, I like the acknowledgement of the fact that the moon would be right there. The only problem is that nobody has ever seen the moon approach or leave the face of the sun. I don't see how that's a problem. What if the sun we see is like a rear projection on a screen we call the sky, and the new moon blocks that projection during an eclipse? Um, do, you, do you see the problem? Because I can see the problem already. But let's play this through. Uh, I don't know how to say this. Actually, I don't know how this is possible, but this video is simultaneously the stupidest explanation for how eclipses work and so very close to being right. So first, let's talk about the reason this is incorrect, which is so obvious that it makes the claim stupid. I'll say it slowly. If this was the way solar eclipses worked, then everyone would see the same thing at the same time throughout the entire daylight world. You see that, right? My name, my last name. You see that, Dave, or whatever your name is in Dirtland. I mean, it's stupidly obvious to you now that I've pointed it out, right? Didn't you notice when you recorded this little demo from different angles that, oh snap, this looks the same no matter where I put the camera. How does this model allow it to be at maximum totality in Texas at 1.42 p.m. and still be a partial eclipse in Indiana? Well, it doesn't. How did you not notice? And actually, the more I think about it, no, it wouldn't look exactly the same. I mean, the degree of eclipse would be the same everywhere, sure. But the sun would not be a circle unless it was right overhead. Yet that's not what we see. We see a circle. 
A quick digression. Globe deniers know that this is not what we see. So this is where they come up with the magical concepts of uh, each person having their own personal sky or the image being decoded uh, in our minds. So we all have different perceptions of the sun and the moon. And don't try to claim that I'm straw manning. Some of you have made these claims to me directly. And I'm sure a few of them made the claim in your head once it became clear that this BS wasn't going to work. Anyway, I digress. So, now that I've explained how this is wholly stupid and wrong and stupid and just stupid, let me tell you how this is nearly right. You see, there is a clear explanation for why we don't see the moon as it approaches the sun. We only see the moon when light bounces off the moon and comes to our eyes. With a full moon, the whole face of the moon is lit by the sun and we see it all. By the third quarter phase, only half of the moon is visible. The part that is not lit by the sun cannot be seen. The waning crescent is a phase we can see in the daytime. Most of the moon is invisible because it's not getting any sunlight. Quick aside, if the moon is a self-illuminating circle, this makes no sense. What is getting sunlight, though, is our atmosphere, scattering blue light. So that's what we see instead of the rest of the moon. Finally, when the moon is really close to the sun in our sky, there's no part of the moon that can bounce light back to our eyes in order for us to see it. Let's go back to Dave's demo, where he's got it all arranged for us. The flashlight represents the sun, the bottle cap, the moon, and in between us and the moon is the sky. Now, the reason we see this bottle cap now is because there is light in this room coming from all directions. But if the flashlight was the only source of light, what light would be coming our way to make the moon visible? None. We would, however, see the sky between us and the moon because it's scattering light toward us. This is how the solar system is set up. In reality, dude, you were so close. Sun moon, sky. But instead of the sky being this thin, dense, reflective surface showing a specific image, it's vast and permeable and scatters light in all directions and is bright enough that only the brightest light sources from the other side can be seen. But some of you are saying, hey Jerry, it's real easy to shoot down someone else's claim, which it really is because when it's this dumb. But where's your demo? Okay, fine. This glowing golf ball representing the sun is the only light source, or as close as I could get. And this non-glowing golf ball is our moon. Using the thumbnail method, I put the golf ball at a distance so that it would have about the same angular size as the actual sun. You can see that while our moon is visibly far away from our sun, you can still see its crescent. But as it approaches to cross, the moon is no longer seen. Now, Here's the same movement seen from different locations, and the experiences are different. In this model, the sun is visible, the moon is not visible, and depending on where you are on Earth, you may or may not see an eclipse, and your experience would occur at different times. Which is exactly how we experience a solar eclipse. And speaking of experiencing a solar eclipse, I got a pack. I have a total solar eclipse to watch. Peace. That's my job! That's what I do! I don't lose! I win! I win! Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.